Hey guys, happy Monday. I don't know how happy it is. A couple things to go over with you guys. Um, first thing I wanted to address is in yesterday's video, um, I, I misunderstood the timeline um, my friend Iris had received her doll. So I wanted to clarify that real quick, just to get that out of the way, that um, she did not receive the doll two weeks ago. She's had the doll for quite some time, but she didn't notice, well, back when she got the doll, she didn't notice the peeling that was occurring um, for a couple weeks after she had received the doll. So she's had the doll for a while. The doll's just gotten um, so much worse over time. And, you know, I think that what's happened with that particular doll is just due to the previous owner doing the regular bathings with the doll. And I think that she was... Um, she even had said that she had bathed the doll several times or on a daily basis or something really got awful like that. Um, so over time, I think the doll has just gotten worse and worse because that's, that's essentially what happens when a doll starts, it's when the doll starts to peel, it's kind of like an unraveling, um, like if you pull a string on something and it just starts to unravel everything, same kind of idea with, with peeling and lifting and separation of like the matting as well as the paint when it starts to come up. That's why it's so miserable to deal with and fix. Um, it's also very hard to stop um, from continuing. So just wanted to clarify that. Um, yeah, today's been pretty miserable. <laughs> um, so y'all are wondering based on this title. So I just, I had to come on and share with you guys. Because I literally, and this is going to sound probably pretty hilarious, I literally woke up the other day, I don't know, it was a few days ago, um, I was dreaming about the fact that due to this situation, like I've had some really wacky dreams, I've had some really bizarre <laughs> dreams, and I have sometimes some odd dreams, but these have been like to the point of ridiculousness now, um, I think due to stress and just how I'm handling being quarantined and all of that and just kind of stuck in my house and sort of crazy in the range of emotions that I have felt so far through this whole thing. And the other night, I actually had a dream that I had to sell Monroe that I... I, the person I sold her to wasn't someone recognizable. You know how you have like faceless people in your dreams? You just know it wasn't someone you knew. And it wasn't someone that I knew and that I had to physically hand her over like as if it were like a living baby adoption that I had to give up my baby. And I was literally, you guys, I was so distraught because I had to, I had to let her go. And I don't normally... <laughs> have tons of dreams about my dolls. Like when I first got her, I used to have dreams like about her getting damaged and stuff like that because I just want her to stay perfect and I don't want anything to happen to her. So that made sense. But the stress that I'm under with like, you know, possibly moving, getting down to like one income in my household, I guess the thought is in the back of my mind that, you know, what would I do if I had to sell her? And so clearly that carried over into my dream so no, guys, I did not sell her in real life. I did, however, sell her in my dreams, and I was very distraught and very upset about the fact that I had to hand this baby over. I just, it's mind-boggling to me how attached I am to this particular doll. I was talking to Tasha yesterday about this, that it's just, I've never been this attached to a doll. You guys know I really cherished having Lucy which was my one-of-a-kind Janica sculpt back when I had her before I got Monroe. And I was quite attached to her, but this is just on a whole new level. And this just makes it even more clear to me that, <laughs> like, it would be very hard to part with this baby. Like, I know that it's in the end of things. At the end of the day, she's just a doll. I get that. But I am quite attached to her. So much so that, you know, I had quite the stressful dream about having to say goodbye to her. It was, yeah, I woke up in the middle of the night, probably around 2 o'clock. I don't know what about 2 o'clock in the morning for me, but that's usually when I wake up and I'm restless in the middle of the night if I wake up. And I just felt so upset. And it was very hard to get back to sleep after that. But <laughs> even though I was like, no, it's just a dream. But you know how those dreams feel so real? This felt very real. And it just, I don't like dreams like that. I don't like stressful <laughs> dreams. 
And so this is just adding to the rest of the stresses of, you know, this whole pandemic happening, being stuck at home. Our minds do crazy things when we're under stress. We also process things differently when we're stressed out. I know I do. It's also, I can always tell when I've got a heightened amount of stress in my life because I do start having some really vivid, very strange, unusual dreams. And this is definitely one of those right at the top. I'm not the only one having strange dreams. I know my daughter's had um, some recent dreams about, you know, this being like the zombie apocalypse and, and she felt like it was very real to her as well. So I don't know if you guys are all having some strange dreams as well. Do you guys even dream about your dolls? Like normally I would say, no, I don't regularly dream about my dolls. I just, I, I don't. But this is an extenuating circumstance, clearly. <laughs> But I had to come on and share this with you guys because I wanted to know, I really do want to know if you guys do dream about your baby dolls, like especially the ones that you're so attached to. Like I also am very attached to my Amy Webb and she's a one of a kind by Linda Webb. And many of you have seen her um, and I know some of you have not seen her, which I can show you real quick. Woo. She's over here at the other end of... The nursery. She's my one of a kind sculpted clay baby by Linda Webb. She's the doll I've had the longest in my collection, other than my very first reborn. <laughs> That's like the longest I've had anything like that. Um, and you know, older dolls, not realistic dolls, but this baby is very special to me. Um, but I'm going to pan you back around. Sorry. <laughs> I don't want to make anybody sick or but yeah, I'm starting to think like, you know, I'm very attached to Amy Webb, but I've never dreamt about her. I don't have any plans on selling her. She's kind of here for good type of thing. Like there's just, she's just that special doll. And Tasha and I were talking about our dolls and the expectation kind of for ourselves that we expect that we will not hold any doll, especially an expensive doll, for forever. Like we don't hold on to them forever. We tend to sell them to bring home something new. And it just got us into a whole topic of conversation about sil the silicone dolls that we have, you know, how we feel about them and how special they are. And compared to like, what would be the next step when you're at this level of collecting, what's the next step when you really have like the best of the best, in my opinion, I think I have the best of the best currently in my collection. Where do you go from there? And it just, it opened up like this door of all these ideas that I had not even thought about because she gave me her perspective on things. And I just, it was like an epiphany after she brought this up and we were talking about it. And so it's definitely something I think that would be fun to chat about in video. Um, but it really does beg the question, like, where does one go when we're at a certain level of collecting where you feel like you've collected the best? And don't feel like you'd be happy or satisfied with anything else currently. And where does that, what does that look like for your collection? Like you guys know that I have little Eloise who is a reborn. You know that I have a custom reborn that's in the works. And um, through this whole thing, I don't know when he would arrive home even once he's finished because you know, shipping has pretty much halted and all that, but eventually he'll come home. So it got me really thinking, and I think that it'll be a fun topic of discussion in another video about kind of where I feel like my collection will be headed to in the future. So all of these things sparked by a dream that I had, and I shared that with Tasha, and then she kind of shared some information about some things she was thinking about, and you know, thank goodness for my friends who enlighten me about the things that I never even considered <laughs> about my collection. So it's really, this, this is the great thing about chatting with our doll friends. Like hearing someone else's perspective on things opens up ideas that you just never thought of. And I think that's pretty awesome. So anyways, I'm relieved to know that I did not, y'all should be relieved to know as well, I did not sell Monroe. She is not going anywhere anytime soon that I'm aware of. And she's happily hanging out in her little chair here, her little bloom chair. And she's just wearing this pretty jacquardy cotton. It, it looks like, a, it, it's like a little uh, swing top slash 
uh, dress with a pair of matching bloomers with the petals on the bloomers, which you can't see because it's covered up by her little dress. But she looks really sweet. I love babies in white. This is no exception. I really love this on her. So there she is on this dreary Monday. Um, I hope you guys have had a great start to your work week if you are working. If not, I hope you're enjoying your time not working. And we will be back with another interesting video, hopefully. Some interesting topics to chat about in the future. So thanks for watching as always, guys. Bye-bye.